Now I will call to order at 9.03 a.m. the September 24th regular meeting of the Delaware <coughs> County Council. And we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very much. I'd entertain a. Well, first, I would ask if the agenda has been properly posted. Yes. It has. I'll have a motion for the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Jessica. Second by Scott. All in favor say aye. 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 It says roll call here. But now I would need a motion to approve the minutes for August 27th. So moved. Jessica. Second. Second by Larry. Well, I just got a vote of aye. So I roll call for all friends. Oh, oh, excuse me. Pardon me. Attendance roll call. Mr. Alexander. Here. Mr. Fowler. Here. Bledsoe. Here. Ms. Chambers. Present. Ms. Lassiter. Here. Piper. Here. I'm sorry, Ms. Piper. <laughs> Ms. Quaintenbush. Here. <laughs> Mr. Hughes. Here. Okay. Get my brain in here before I engage my mouth. Approval of the minutes for August the 27th. I have a motion. From Jessica and a second from Larry. Roll call. Mr. Powell. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Quakenbush. Yes. Now we're going to proceed with the financial and transfer agenda. And if you will, if you have a copy of the agenda the word financial needs to be placed in front of transfer as a title and i'll turn this over to mrs patterson hey, county general corner 103 administration assistance six thousand nine hundred twenty three dollars total request six thousand nine hundred twenty three dollars second jessica second by ryan ryan Questions? This is something we discussed at length in budget hearing, I think. And this is just to finish out this year to cover that appropriation for next year, correct? Yep. Roll call. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassen. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Bowler. Yes. Quite Yes. Uh, other overtime replacement funds. Okay, I have a correction. Uh, overtime should say the count 196. And we need to change the amount because they forgot to ask for FICO and PER. So instead of 196 saying 14,565, that should say 12,000. FICO should say $918. And purse should say $1,344. Say that number again, one, three. One, three, four, four. Total is the same, right? Uh, got that the total. Oh, all right. Fourteen 
do the same thing. Yes. 14262, because I know it's going to leave a little bit of money in there and I forgot. 14262. Okay. okay. And, and so that total reduced then? That total reduced to 14262. Right. And I, I know I questioned this at finance meeting. That word other, is that supposed to say UMS or? No, other means it's not county general. All the, okay. all the rest on the agenda. Are oh, other. that's separate. That makes yes. That a little but it is EMS overtime. Okay, I got you. I guess I got an answer to that yes. question. Okay, so we're ready for a motion to approve. I'll move to approve. Second. Move by Jessica, second by Larry. That was EMS Any other questions? Roll call. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Ms. Clark. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay, EMS capital improvement on the overtime line instead of 155, that should say 263 overtime. <coughs> 46,600. FICA is account 171 for 3,000. 378.50. PERF is account 172 for $5,219.20. Total request 55,197.90 for 70. Uh, I need a motion to approve as amended. I'll move to approve as amended. I'll second. Thank you, Larry. Jessica made a motion. I got her in second. Okay. I don't know if I get Brian and Larry's voice in my ear about the same thing. Okay. Uh, this was not, uh, did not come to a conclusion at uh, finance. Uh, we discussed it. Does any of the council members have a question on this? What were the questions? I guess that would be mine. In the finance meeting. Well, why why it was such a high amount, I guess. But um, <coughs> there was discussion. And um, there were several reasons why. And personally, I don't know how to express them. You guys want to say a little bit on that? Well, we're, we're back every fall for. for State your name, please. Oh, fine. You're fine. You're fine. I can actually go on time and mess up these days. Um, we're back every fall for overtime money. This year, those seem to be just a little bit more. We've uh, paid out more overtime due to being in Fort Staff, mostly. But we weren't paying salaries. So that's where a lot of that came from. Our events build in overtime that we have to pay no matter what. So I mean, we're trying to manage every dime that we have. So we you know, shut down a truck that run an extra squad kept us from paying over time, so we just tried everything we can to try to get through. But we are here every fall to get more money in the fall because we asked for that amount, but we know about what we're going to spend every year, and we don't quite get that much to come back in the fall. So. I, I couldn't hear you earlier, but did you say a lot of this was attributed to changeover in staff? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. I thought that's yeah. what you said. Yeah. So we weren't paying out the salary lines, we were paying overtime. Kind of rough time this summer. And they had an unusual situation within their staff, and I think uh, this would be a good time to just take a minute and recognize that. I think we all understand what that was about. And some of the staff needed extra time to do counseling. So let's just take a moment and remember our fallen employee.
Thank you very much. Roll call, please. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Mr. Quayton. Yes. Thank you. Health Department. Immunization grant. 198 per chain nurse, $22,620. 171 FICO, $1,722. 211 supplies, 4000 323 travel, 2428 393 advertising, 3000 Total request, 33770 I'll move to approve. Second. By Jessica, second by Jane. There wasn't a member from health department at the finance meeting yeah, so we didn't cover this at the finance meeting well mr bain got word from my remark right <laughs> and uh, he called me we had a nice conversation he he said he had his shirt and tie on ready to come but an emergency came up he had to go to take care of and he couldn't make the meeting and then he's in uh, out of town today on a conference so he can't be here today this is just the annual grant that uh, I, I think it's a state grant just correct me if i'm wrong but it's just a grant it, he's just asking for us to appropriate the funds in the proper line items any questions roll call Ms. Piper. yes Alexander. Yes. Mr. Bowers. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Mr. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Quite good. Yes. Health Department, this should say preparedness grant. 198 part time, 15,000. Uh, wait, no. Oh, yeah. 171. FICA, 1,147. 320 services other than personnel, 5,600. <clears throat> 323 travel, 3,250. Total request, 25,000. Motion to approve. Second. Moved by Jane, second by Jessica. Questions? But I think this is the same situation. Same situation, yeah. yes. Yeah. And you've talked to her about these. It, it's a grant. Uh, and we're just okay. Pro we're, we're just appropriating the funds uh, from the grant into line items so we can expend them. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Mr. Blesso. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Quakenberg. Yes. That concludes the financial agenda move on to the transfer agenda okay the regular transfer agenda starts with a planning commission 198 part-time building commissioner minus 6988 the next line should say 110 building commissioner plus 6988 total request zero move to approve second moved by jessica scott yeah. scott Thank you. That's why I let Ryan do it. Sorry. Do you want a little explanation on this from the plan commission or does everybody understand what it is? Yeah. It's just going, it's part of what we discussed in budget hearing, going from a part time to a full time building commissioner, which in the past we had a full time building commissioner. And a secretary in the office uh, zoning administrator and in the cutbacks we made we the commissioner larry was probably there eliminated the whole department moved it into plan commission but the economy is better a lot more uh, per permits are being issued and um, it actually self-sustains itself financially based on a full-time commissioner Roll call, please. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Quakenberg. Yes. 
Circuit Court, 155 probation, minus 5,500. The next line should say 441 computer scanner equipment, plus 5,500. Total request zero. That's approved. Second. Move by Jessica, <coughs> second by Scott. We discussed this at finance. It's uh, two tablets <coughs> for the judges to use if they wish to carry with them. I guess their their personal computers are quite large and have been questioned at airport terminals. And so they're going to purchase two tablets and share that among them. Yeah. How big is the computer they're taking through the terminal? How, how was the 17 inch laptop. 17 inch laptop. Yeah. That's what Odyssey gave the, sorry, Emily Anderson, court administrator. That's what the um, Odyssey gave them because they couldn't fit the regular computers that they usually use at the bench because our benches are so small. So we opted for laptops. Well, the only laptops we have are these 17 inch laptops and they just have a lot of problems traveling <coughs> like going home with it's one thing going on an airplane and traveling with it's another so we got some quotes on tablets um their surface pro for anywhere from 25 to 2700 dollars so i just put enough in there to cover whichever one um it company i need to get so does that amount cover your um getting those up to speed as far as the software and all that okay. yeah that's with everything with okay. everything installed anyone else Roll call, please. Ms. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Mr. Quakenbush. Yes. Thank you. Communication Center 129 OIC plus 1700, 177 Educational Incentive minus 1700, 194 CTO plus 1200, 365. G1 line minus 1200 total request zero. That's approved. Moved by Jessica. Second. Second by Scott. Discussion. All you want to explain a little bit about what CTO and T1 line is. Careful there. I'm getting ready. Get too, get up too fast. No, I'm getting ready to have a knee replacement. Oh, my goodness. Tomorrow, so. Well, good luck. Paul Singleton, Director 911. Um, OIC is <coughs> officer in charge. Anytime I don't have a supervisor there, I have someone off the floor who becomes the OIC, the supervisor. They get paid extra. Um, it's coming from the educational and incentive. We have some people that have left that. Um, we're not using all, all that this year. Um, certified training officer is once we put um, new hires on the floor, they sit with a training officer. Um, depends on how quickly they catch on. And this um, certified training officers, they get paid a little extra. And the T1 line is the direct line that we have with the state for our IDEX and our NCIC stuff. That's everything that, that communicates back to the state and then to the federal system. And uh, cost of, of that has not been as high this year. So we're just moving some <coughs> money around to cover other spots. We always run short since I've been there. We've always ran short of OIC and um, the training certified training officers pay depends on how, how much turnover we have and how many newbies are getting trained. So Sounds like you lost some people that had experience too. Huh? Yes. Okay, any questions? Hold <coughs> call please. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lasser. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Mr. Blessed. Yes. Mr. Quakenberg. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, Paul. This time tomorrow. Jail 145, E139 Correctional Officer, minus $397.43. D139 plus 
D108 minus $92.30, C108 plus $92.30, B113 minus $10,051.53, C113 plus $10,051.53, total request zero. Moved approved. Second. Approved by Larry, second by Jessica. This is just, uh, we talked about this finance, this is just for people are matriculating in and out new hires roll call please miss lassiter yes miss piper yes mr alexander yes mr ballard yes mr bledsoe yes Ms. chambers yes mr quakenbush yes sheriff c 106 deputy minus 261 dollars and 58 cents b 121 sergeant plus 261 dollars and 58 cents a109 minus 16,153.63. B109 plus 16,153.63. Total request zero. Move to approve. Second. By Jessica, second by Scott. Questions? The small amount, the 261, was a correction in the bookkeeping, and the other was a promotion. Roll call, please. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Mr. Quakenbush. Yes. Lowett Jill, A104 minus $292.50, 197, 197 <coughs> overtime plus $292.50, A112. Minus 2925.28, 197 overtime plus 2925.28, A114 minus 227.20, A197 overtime plus 227.20, B115 minus 13,531.62, 197 overtime plus 13,531.62, total request zero. We're going to have her go ahead and do that. Next one, too. We have many different fractions. We'll go ahead and do the next one, Donna. Yeah. A114 minus 125.92, 114 plus 125.92, total request zero. Second. Second. And Jessica, second by Scott. These were approved that finance. The 125.92 was a correction. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Quakenbush. Yes. The first addendum starts with the clerk. 315 equipment repairs minus 1,000. 441 computer scanner equipment plus 1,000. Total request zero. Move to approve. Second. By Jessica, second by Scott. Questions of the clerk? This was approved by the Finance Committee. Roll call, please. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Chambers? Yes. Ms. Lassiter? Yes. Ms. Piper? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mr. Quakenbush? Yes. Election board, the first line, instead of saying 316, that should say 315 precinct workers, minus 8,000, 442 office machines, plus 8,000, total request zero. Move to approve. Second. Moved by Jessica, second by Larry. You want to explain this, Mr. Yeah, Parker? Rough day. <coughs> Excuse me. State your name, Harvey. please. Pardon? Your name. Oh, I'm sorry. Rich Tangler, Councilor. Uh, what we're doing is updating the computers in the election room uh, and bringing in a firewall that the state has almost mandated, well, they have uh, that we put on them to improve election security. Questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Chambers? Yes. Ms. Lassiter? Yes. Ms. Piper? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Mr. Quakenbush. Yes. E <clears throat> EMS 
excuse me, C106 minus $5,078.52, B146 plus $5,078.52, B147 plus $5,078.52, B148 plus $5,078.52, B149 plus $5,078.52, and B151 plus $5,078.52. So to request zero, this will not get changed. We talked about it at the finance. Okay. 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 I've got a note on it, yeah. Okay. okay. So it she called me back, and it this figure really is the right figure. Okay. Move to approve. Second. Ryan second. Jessica made the motion. Got it. Thank you. Any questions? This is just a change in the employee, right? Brian, I'm making just to know, Officer McGraw was having this. She went from an advanced DST to a paramedic, and there wasn't enough in her line to cover a medic pay. So we're transferring from an employee who left into her salary line item so she can get paid out for the rest of the year. Oh, good. Okay, I didn't totally understand that. Okay, roll call, please. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassen. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Bauer. Yes. Mr. Bless. Yes. Yes. Circuit Court A129 minus 6312, B129 plus 6312. The next line should say C137, that should say minus 6183 61. <coughs> B137 plus 6183 61. Total request should be zero. Second. As corrected. As corrected. Yes. Thank you. Moved by Jessica, second by Scott. Any questions? We'll make speech, Emily, or <laughs> Emily Anderson, court administrator. I have a an employee that resigned. She's our court reporter. So we promote promoted within the office. We have an assistant court reporter moving up to court reporter. So that's the court reporter uh, transfer of money. And we posted the assistant court reporter job, and we're now interviewing for that job. So that's the assistant court reporter transfer. It's interesting. You have a little turnover in the courts. I know. Compared a lot. To, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Roll you. Roll call, please. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Bowler. Yes. Ms. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yeah. Ms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Works for graduation 311 microfilming minus 10,000, 442 office machines plus 10,000 total request zero. Okay, Second. Moved by Jessica, second by Scott. <clears throat> what we're doing here, excuse me, Rich Bangle County Clerk. What we're doing here is uh, we don't microfilm anything anymore, uh, but we do have microfilm that we're going to have to keep and maintain. So what I'm doing is, is asking you to transfer the money from microfilming to office machines so that we can buy a better microfilm reader of what the reveal microfilm and you know, we have to keep those records fresh. Like you said in the finance committee meeting, this is a dying item. He wants to get a new one while they're still made of it. Any questions? Hold call, please. Ms. Piper. Yes. Ms. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Slats. Yes. Mr. Quaker. Yes. Okay, the second addendum, commissioners, B133, JC maintenance, minus 12,254.77. C133, JC maintenance, <coughs> plus 12,000. Excuse me, 254.77, total request zero. Move to approve. Second. Brian? Larry. Larry. Larry? Get it right, one of these. Go get the back. <laughs> when you speak, it bounces off the wall over there somehow. And that fools, fools me every time. Hey, Ryan. Are you trying your voice? I'm not here. You're projecting, Larry. You're projecting. <laughs> get a little echo. <laughs> Okay, this is a new employee in the commission, but someone left. And I don't know whether they moved somebody up or from part time or not. Yes, they did. Okay, thank you. Roll call. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Bauer. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. 
Ms. Chambers? Yes. Ms. Lassiter? Yes. Ms. Piper? Yes. Ms. Quaker Bush? Yes. Share C-119 minus 12,979.26, D-119 plus 12,979.26, D-127 minus 11,044.46, C-127 plus 11,044.46, 131 minus 9,743.71, A-131 plus 9,743.71, total request to Second. Moved by Jessica, second by Ryan. Questions? Comments? Want to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll call, please. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Yes. Clerk B125, $757.12. C125 minus $757.12. Total request to Moved Second. I made a mistake when we transferred money for a new employee, so we have to transfer some back to South Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Roll call, please. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers? Yes. Ms. Lassen? Yes. Ms. Piper? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mr. Bauer? Yes. Mr. Wakenberg? Yes. Highway B138 minus 37,348, C138 <coughs> plus 37,348. That should say 134, not 135, minus 15,000. 341 Workman's Comp plus 15,000 total request zero. That's approved. As correct. Okay. Yes, as corrected. Second. Second, my stock. Moved by Jessica. Questions? Comments? You want to say anything? <laughs> sure. Well, again, thank you. Roll call, please. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter? Yes. Ms. Piper? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Ms. Bowers? Yes. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Mr. Quakenbush? Yes. Kim Bridge, B141 minus $2,864. B109 minus $1,871.98. 173 minus $5,000. 341 Workman's Comp. Plus 9,735.98. Total request zero. Good to approve. Second. Not that one. I judge Larry. Larry, you? Yeah. This stop is over here. Pretty close. Close. Close call. Yeah, it was pretty close. Let's see who came in first. Okay. If this was discussed in finance. Uh, I'm not real familiar with how the workers' comp insurance works. I guess I need to talk to a commissioner about that. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Piper? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Mr. Bledsoe? Yes. Ms. Chambers? Yes. Mr. Quakenbush? Yes. Yep. Ready for the famous motion. I'll go. Motion to approve transfers and to amend salary ordinance with like reductions. Peter second. Second. Ryan. Yep. Okay. Roll call, please. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Bowler. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Yes. Moving right along, uh, I don't believe we have any tax abatements. I don't have any appointments. I have been given information that we have a member of the uh, 
Tourism Commission that's missed several meetings that I'm going to have to take a look at that. And those are annual appointments. But the information I've got, this person's missed five meetings. So probably need to make an adjustment there. We'll probably do that next month. Personnel job descriptions. Human resources director. Pam and Cameron Delroy, County Human Resource Director. I have a job description. I think Denise sent it out to all the council people for uh, Janie is making a new position <coughs> for the DCC. We have this description. This job description. I guess I ask uh, Mr. Alexander who's been approved with that board. Well, I was at a budget meeting oh, uh, last month. So did this get approved last month? Yes, okay. it was a discussion that we had regarding developing the um, job description and what would go into it for the grant that we're writing up the course. Can you kind of explain a little bit about it just so that they'll have an understanding of what the position will do? Yes, the peer recovery coach, sorry, Jane Miranda, Community Corrections. Uh, the peer recovery coach is designed to aid with case managers in our jail release program. Um, the DFC requires that we spend two to three hundred hours of intervention per inmate. One case manager with a caseload of 30 some people cannot do that. Uh, so the peer recovery coach is designed to supplement their services if they need to go get food stamps, if they need to go sign up for insurance. It's the peer recovery specialist that is. Uh, responsible for helping them do that and then working with the case manager to ensure they get all their services while they're out. Any other questions? Did you hear that number of hours that they have? I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's like, laughs> well, it, and I shouldn't laugh. You know, I, I really shouldn't laugh. It's a habit I have. But uh, I keep making the same statements. We're being overwhelmed in not just this community, but the entire country, I guess, by social habits that are creating problems in our public safety that really aren't public safety problems until the social habits get to the point where the people do bad things. And then it costs a lot of money trying to help them back to the normal, them being the offenders. It seems like we have more and more programs, but the flow of in, inmates, I guess, each increases. Did this receive an approval through the board? Did they, did they approve this or? Not the actual job, job description because it wasn't typed up, but the content of it for the grant. Right, I, yes. I remember there was some discussion of yes. it in the meeting previous to that, so, okay. Any other comments, questions? We need to approve that. Do we have a motion here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the job descriptions for Delaware Community, Delaware County Community Corrections, peer recovery coach. Second. Scott, second by Jessica. Any other discussion? Roll mm -hmm. call, please. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Bowler. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lassiter. Yes. Ms. Piper. Yes. Mr. Quakenbush. Yes. Thank you, Pam, for helping get that to us. Okay, now we're going to move to resolutions. The first one says authorizing the entry into an interlocal agreement for the investment of public funds. We delayed that and then the treasurer, I called the treasurer the other day to talk with him a minute about it and he was not going to be able to be here. He said, training something or other today so we're going to bring this up next month i'm not sure i don't totally understand it i think i'm gonna to have to talk to him 
more about it. It's an interesting something or other. Okay, and then um, I took the liberty of preparing a resolution for the August meeting, but uh, through discussion with a couple of my fellow council members who didn't put it on the floor, it's in regard to the sixth Delaware County Court, Circuit Court. Uh, I asked the resolution be sent to all the council members for consideration this month because of a letter I received that was signed by the county commissioners endorsing the circuit court. This re resolution reads, whereas the judges of Delaware circuit courts are requesting their creation of a Delaware circuit court number six by the Indiana General Assembly based upon weighted caseloads of the current circuit courts and assuming the closing of the Muncie City Court and whereas the judges have requested that the Delaware County Council acknowledge their request and the county share of funding for a new circuit court, and whereas the county lacks the additional funds in the current county budget, which would be required as its share of the cost of a circuit court number six, now thereby, by, therefore be it resolved that the Delaware County Council hereby acknowledges the request of the judges of the Delaware Circuit Courts to create a Delaware Circuit Court number six. The council is unable to assume any obligation to provide the county share of funding such a court in the event of its creation by act of any General Assembly due to the impact of the property tax circuit breaker and other factors. And I'm putting that on the agenda and before we want to discuss it, I need a motion to approve. I'll move to approve that. We have a resolution number. 2019-034. Move to approve 2019-034. Second. Second by Ryan. Discussion. Mr. Hughes prepared this. Do you have any comment? Judge. Make the judge's comment. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Marianne Voorhees, presiding judge for the Delaware Circuit Courts. So I come today with our court administrator, Emily Anderson, Judge Dowling, Prosecutor Eric Kaufman is here. Um, I'd like the uh, just some history here. Back in 2000, the Delaware County Court System made what was really at the time sort of um, an exciting thing. We unified our five courts into one unified circuit court. We were one of just a few court systems who did that. I think we were second or third after Monroe County. Now, all courts in the state of Indiana, based upon these initiatives, have the same jurisdiction. It doesn't matter what label they have. If it's a circuit court or a superior court, we all have the same labels. So no matter what we would have called our courts back in the day, county courts, superior courts, circuit courts, we would all today have the same jurisdiction. Um, many courts are now unified into one circuit court all around the state of Indiana. Uh, many city and town courts are closing, <coughs> closing, Yorktown court being one of those. Yorktown town court decided, or Yorktown decided they couldn't fund their town court anymore. They closed. All those cases went to the Muncie city court. Um, we're not, and, and I think your resolution is inaccurate. We are not assuming the Muncie City Court is closing at all. That's not what we are assuming here. Um, if, the, if something did happen to the Muncie City Court, we can't guarantee that the Muncie City Council is going to continue to fund that court. All those cases would have to come to the circuit courts. We'd have to figure out a way to handle, what is it, about 3,000 misdemeanor cases in an already overcrowded court system. So we believe that creating the Sixth Circuit Court will improve justice for all citizens in Delaware County. Mr. Hoffman can speak if you want him to about the inefficiencies of having a Muncie City Court where somebody, for example, a domestic violence victim can go to the Muncie City Court, have a bench trial, the defendant can be found guilty, can then ask for the case to be reheard in the Circuit Court, which means it has to come over across the street, it has to be set for a new trial date. 
Oftentimes the time runs for these people to be retried before we can even get them to trial. The victim has to testify twice. Uh, we have many defendants who have two different probation officers in two different court systems because they have a case in the city court, they have a case in the circuit court. Jane Miranda can speak to that. Many of their people have dual case cases. It would be so much more efficient if we had one court system where these people could come through and we wouldn't have to maybe spend as much money as we are spending, as you noted, on these different social programs. We know money is an issue. We have always paid attention to the bottom line. I think we just gave back, what was it, Emily? We're giving back. We're giving back forty or $50,000 that we haven't spent this year. We will pay attention to the bottom line. We will not spend any more money than we need. The net cost to, of the Sixth Circuit Court, which isn't the total cost because of the money coming into the county, the net cost will greatly outweigh um, the, the cost or the net, the benefits to the community will greatly outweigh the net cost. We, we firmly believe that and we would ask that you defeat the resolution, ask us, give us the opportunity to go to the legislature and make this request. We don't know if the legislature will approve this request, but we would much appreciate the opportunity to present our case to the Indiana legislature and seek a Sixth Circuit Court. Did I leave anything out? Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Judge. Eric Hoffman, Delaware County Prosecutor. I just want to touch on a few of the things uh, Judge Voorhees uh, brought up, and that is the rule that's called in the law the de novo trial rule. So, and this is very frustrating among victims, particularly in vic uh, domestic violence cases. Um, if you get something stolen from you, uh, et cetera, et cetera, you get somebody hit you, uh, you're a victim of a battery. Um, you go to city court. It's not a court of record, okay? So you can't take an appeal. If a defendant loses their case, they cannot take an appeal to the court of appeals. What the rules say is you get a redo. You get to have your trial, come over to the circuit courts and have a redo and have a jury trial this time. So what you're doing is you're doubling the cost. So you have a cost of prosecution and defense in the city court. And then you come over to the circuit court and you're doubling your cost because you have to prosecute it and defend it again. A new prosecutor, new public defender, new uh, file in the clerk's office, new everything. And then when they lose there, then they can appeal to the, to the Indiana uh, Court of Appeals. So that's, that's three bites at the apple. Whereas if you had a circuit court, it'd be filed there, <coughs> you'd be tried there, and you'd go right to the Court of Appeals. And then that would eliminate <coughs> the local cost. Then that that gets passed on to the state, the state's attorney general's office, and so on. Um, and speaking from the prosecutor's point of view, the defendants know these kind of things and they play games, okay? The city court doesn't have the ability to have jury trials. So what do they do to delay their case? They ask for a jury trial. That means it comes over to the circuit courts anyways. And once they get over here, the case gets bumped around and usually, or not usually, it has to go to circuits four or five um, who are already, my, my, which is my understanding, overburdened with uh, small claims cases, foreclosures, and some other things on top of the regular criminal docket. <clears throat> so these cases stay pending for quite some time because the judges obviously have to, by law, take, excuse me, <coughs> more serious cases, your murderers, your rapes, and people who are incarcerated first. So these misdemeanors that come over from city court, they stay pending. And then there's these rules, criminal court, criminal rule four, that they can only stay pending for so long. And when that once they hit that toll, that that period, they get dismissed. <clears throat> and then I have to go in to tell the victim, hey, your case got dismissed because it stayed pending too long. The courts didn't have time to hear it. And it's not the judge's fault. It's the amount of cases. Um, so I, I'm in, I am in favor of a circuit court six. I think it would serve justice. I think victims would love it. Uh, they only have to testify once, as Judge Borke said. Imagine a domestic violence victim having to come in and testify twice as these victims play their games in the court system. Um, so I'm certainly in favor of it. Um, I don't know the financials of it particularly, but I do know that I can tell you I file thousands of misdemeanors and infractions in the Muncie City Court. And I don't know how much of that goes back to the city of Muncie, but I think a lot of it does because it funds their clerk's office and it funds their, their court. So instead of that money going to the city, it would now come to the county and fund that court. And I'm telling you as a prosecutor, I will file, if the, if the circuit six gets open, I will file all the misdemeanors and all the infractions in the Delaware County Circuit Court 
um, and that would be my discretion. I, I wouldn't file it in the city court. To me, it's a no-brainer. Um, all the courts would be in one building. Um, there wouldn't be confusion with regard to what court do I go to, what building do I go to. You all go to the Justice Center. Um, and I think in terms of historical perspective, it's my understanding that since Ju uh, Chief Justice Randy Shepard was on the bench uh, in the Indiana Supreme Court, he was anti-city courts for many reasons. Number one, they're not courts of record. Number two, you have these de novo issues and delays and so on. And that idea of uh, closing down city courts has continued with the Indiana Supreme Court. I won't speak for them, but that's what I hear at conferences and that's what I hear them, uh, the innuendo is, is that the Supreme Court would like to see all city courts close. So I think that's coming anyways. Um, the other thing is I could do it tomorrow, as Judge Voorhees said. I could file every single misdemeanor and infraction in the circuit courts tomorrow and bog them down. And should, nobody would get justice. Now, I won't do that because I know they can't handle it. Um, with the Circuit 6, I know they can't handle it. So, um, again, I support Circuit Court 6, and I would hope you do so, too. Anybody have any questions? I kind of observed the situation with the Yorktown court when it happened. And uh, what I observed was, and the information I received, was that your predecessor started filing all of these cases in city court, and it literally bled the Yorktown town dry of money from those cases, and that's why the Yorktown court was closed because there was no activity. No, that'd be incorrect. Well, <coughs> the city of Yorktown. What the council members expressed. The town of Yorktown decided to close their court. Uh, Jeff Arnold did not decide to not file cases out there. Now, in the past, I will say, uh, under Rick Reed's administration, offenses like DUI and whatnot were filed in the, in the uh, uh, Yorktown Town Court. Uh, when Mr. Arnold became prosecutor, rightfully so, he had issues that the, the Yorktown Town Court did not have a probation officer. So it was unacceptable to him that you be found guilty of an OWI and not be placed on probation and have a probation officer check on you. So yes, he did not file OWIs there for very, for good reason. But um, other minor offenses and speeding offenses and fraction offenses were filed there. So it was up to the, the Yorktown Town Court, or excuse me, the Yorktown Board uh, voted to close their own court, which then left us to transfer all of those thousands of cases to the city court, to the Muncie City Court, which was a nightmare. With, uh, well, what you, what you said earlier, with the, the I guess, quote-unquote, income that's coming in to the city court and, and Muncie in the situation that they're in, if they're getting positive income out of the city court, why would they want to let the city court go to, go to the sixth? Well, for lack of a better term, they don't get a vote because I get to choose where to file my cases. So I can file misdemeanors and infractions in a city court or I can file them in the circuit court. So right now, because of feasibility, they only have five courts, I file them in city court, okay? But I could tomorrow say, you know what? I don't want to file them in city court anymore. I want to file them in circuit court and bog the circuit court judges down with thousands of cases. Um, so it's not as if the city, they sort of have a, they sort of have a vote in, 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 that, in that way they can, they can vote and say, we're going to close our court, okay? We're not going to have a court like Yorktown did. The other side of that coin is I can say, I choose not to file there. I mean, I, I choose the place of filing. Does that make sense? I'm not always having discussions in the future, but at this time, uh, with the things that we've got up in the air, the, the move to the new jail, the uh, EMS thing, I'm, I'm not ready to support a six court. I'm going to need... Uh, some more information, uh, some more discussion on this, and, and I I don't think that we're getting positive cash flow out of the court system now. So why would adding an additional six court, all of a sudden we're going to re re receive positive cash flow? It's the type of case. So if I prosecute somebody for a murder, rape, robbery, uh, burglary, they're going to prison. Uh, they can be a fine. They can be assessed all the fines and court costs. The judge wants to do it. They're not going to pay it. 
okay, they're going to go to prison for 20 years. They're not going to pay it. That's why there's no positive cash flow in the, the circuit courts we have it at, in my, I mean, I, I don't know the numbers, just I'm speaking an, anecdotally. The, the, the types of cases that are filed in city court, you're not going to prison. You have low level misdemeanors, you have infractions, moving violations, speeding, running a stop sign, et cetera, et cetera. All of those people pay. They all pay their tickets. They all pay their fines and court costs by and large. Um, there's your revenue. That's the difference between a major felony court and a misdemeanor infraction traffic court. If I may speak, Amanda Dunnick, uh, Judge Muncie City Court, 300 North High Street. Um, I have the value or the, the numbers from 2018 where the portion that went to the city was $317,294. Uh, that's not including the portion that went to the state, that's not including the portion that went to the county. Um, the county received 168516 so that money would still come to the county, so you'd be totaling those two together. That's the revenue that Muncie City Court saw in 2018. And again, city doesn't have a right to vote on whether or not city court exists. There is a movement from the Supreme Court to do away with city and town courts. So once city court is shut down, I don't think there would be approval from the Supreme Court to open it back up, even if the prosecutor wanted to file there. Um, that's not including the probation user fees. I have one probation officer right now with no court staff and bringing in close to probably $85,000 a year in probation user fees with one person working those cases. Um, the county is currently set up to, to to bring in more money than that because they have more people working it. So there would be generate there would be money generated there as well. Um, the state would pay for the judge's salary, but aside from the financial end of things, what I would ask that this council consider, I'm I currently hear domestic battery cases. I hear battery of injury cases. I hear carrying a handgun without a license cases. These are all very serious crimes in my opinion. I'm a de novo court, meaning I have no direct, there's no direct path to the circuit, to the appellate court. So if there's a conviction taken in Muncie City Court, all the defendant has to do is post a $500 cash bond. It comes over to the circuit courts and starts brand new. So when you're looking with a domestic battery case, the victim will come to court a year after it's filed to testify. If I find guilty, they can appeal it. It goes over to the circuit courts and starts all over again, and she'll have to testify again. And I don't think that's right for that type of case. Currently, with out of circuit six, there's no room in the one through five to hear all of those misdemeanors. So there is a benefit to a circuit six outside of the financial end of it that the community deserves. I don't know, I'm, I'm coming in late, so I apologize if I repeated anything, but I want to make sure that the council is aware that it is more than just financial with the circuit six. When you have the economy tank the way that it has when you have the drug epidemic spiral out of control like it has, that increases the number of cases. <clears throat> Until you increase the number of courts, there is still that, that funnel that justice isn't being served, people don't have access to it, and you have victims that are having to retestify when those cases are filed in city court. I've been working with the prosecutor's office to try to move domestic battery <coughs> quicker than we can because city court is a part-time court. <clears throat> out of circuit six, I don't see how we move them any quicker and how that we get some finality in the cases within a year. It's always gonna be within two years, there's a trial. May I speak? Sure. Um, I, I feel like that I have done my due diligence on this. I, I, did, I have a question of Amanda. On the on the revenue, on the one that that's a three hundred seventeen thousand. Yes. It says it goes to the city, town, townships. Do yes. do the cities do they? Does that all come to the county, or or will that be a portion back to the cities and townships or whatever? When I went through this, it appears that there's only a couple lines that would go to the city even if it was a county court. Okay. Um, it looks like line 37, which was 7,000, is the civil penalties for local ordinances that will always go back to the to the municipality with that ordinance. Okay. Um, I'm unsure of the law enforcement continuing education program because there is a monthly police department. I'm not sure where that gets attributed to. 
if that would come to the county or if that would still go to the city. I don't have the answer on that. What's the uh, value on that one? That one was seventeen thousand seven seventy eight. But the late payment fee, which is 18000 would come to the county. The document storage fee, 25000 would come to the county. Um, the portion on the, the general and specific, the city township, city town township portion, the 101, I believe that would come to the, um, I believe that would come to the county. So I, and I thank Amanda for getting getting us these reports that she has to file with the state anyway at the end of the year. Yes. So they've always been available to us. Yes. Um, and I will provide 2019. When you look at the, the, the budget and expenditures for 2018, if I can get back to the back page, actual expenditures for 2018 was 380,000. But that includes my my salary, which was fifty six, um, which the county would not have to pay. So I'm not standing in front of you saying this is going to be a money maker because courts aren't supposed to be a money maker, and I'm not saying that this is going to be a wash. But when you look at the benefit to the public as far as being able to resolve domestic battery cases, DUIs, carrying a handgun without a license, um, more efficiently the the impact is going to be minimal financially um, and that minimal impact i think is outweighed tremendously by the benefit that the public would receive and i understand mr quackenbush is uh concerned because of the circuit five or the superior four issue but with the movement from the supreme court to do away with sitting in town courts i don't think we're going to have that issue moving forward ultimately that would be a question for mr hoffman because i think it's where he's going to file his charges, first and foremost. But if we do away with city courts and then the Supreme Court takes away the authorization for us, I don't foresee that coming back. I guess I have a question along that line. I've, I've, I've expressed my concern because as a commissioner in the 80s, I was convinced that the city court would close and did close, and the county created a court five. <clears throat> I was away from politics for a while by the time I got back as a council member, city court was open again. Is there a way that uh, the legislation at the state level could uh, stipulate that there would be no city court in Muncie, Indiana in the future if that circuit court is established? It's the judge there. I have no Two idea. Two judges there. I do not know. I mean, I don't know that. Are you a creative, is your court created by statute? It's created by statute and by ordinance. Um, so the authority for the municipal court is ultimately city ordinance. Um, but you have, to, like, you can't just create an ordinance and create a court, it has to come from the Supreme Court. So I don't know that any local body or legislative body could ever take away the authority for the Supreme Court to create a court, whether it be circuit superior or municipal. Um, but I've been a municipal judge since July of 2015. And as far as I know, every session that I've gone to, every judicial conference I've gone to, there's, there's a movement to do away with, and a lot of judges, municipal judges are against doing away with them. Um, because I still practice law and because I'm, I could be arguing myself out of a job. I get that because I won't automatically become a circuit six judge. I'd have to either be appointed or win an election. But I think the community deserves it with the type, from what I've learned since July 15, watching the number of cases that go through the Muncie City Court, the, the state and the defendants all deserve more time than what this municipal court can go on. And the victims all deserve finality, but the city court is not able to get it. Yeah, I, th I think I understand your concern would be that if you did support the Sixth Circuit Court, it opened up, we ran it, and then we decided, oh, wow, well, we have way too many cases. Let's refile back into the city court. Um, I don't know that there's any way we could do some kind of, legis there could be any kind of legislative action for closing that. I think if you wanted something from the Board of Judges saying that we would not do that, um, 
a local rule, you know, some kind of an agreement. I don't know, Mr. Hoffman, obviously, whoever is in his position has, that's the ultimate authority is that the prosecutor, where the prosecutor decides to file cases. But I definitely think if, um, if that's something that you would want from the current board of judges, we could certainly um, do a resolution or a local rule or a standing order that we would not support reopening and refiling back into the city court. We would do, obviously we would do everything we had to do in order to use the Sixth Circuit Court. And we have great, you know, we have great ideas for it. All the domestic violence cases, all the, a lot of level six felonies, even throw, put some protective orders in there. We would use it to its, its maximum possible, um, you know, expansion and all the cases we could put in there efficiently. <clears throat> so if that's something you would want from the board of judges, I'm sure Judge Dowling and I would say we would we would get you whatever assurance that you would want. So. I like to go ahead. Uh, real quick. When this initially, when I first initially heard about this, you know, I questioned it uh, as being a commissioner working with the judges over the years and. And Amanda, everything you've ever told me has always been spot on. Uh, I'll tell you one, the reason why I'm going to have to support this ordinance today <clears throat> is I, I agree with, with, with what you're saying, and I have no reason to not ever doubt anybody in, in the judicial system. The, uh, we talk about giving the $40,000 back and how much that is appreciated up here. The one thing I've learned here in my three years as a councilman versus being in the executive spot is in that letter of support, it's easier sitting in that. I support the idea. I support the Sixth Circuit Court. But we are, obviously, just this meeting today, uh, Mr. Spangler, we were mandated eight grand or to do certain things, firewalls and stuff. And as a financial arm of the, the, the government, it's like every other meeting we're mandated by the state to do something. And I personally don't believe the General Assembly has ever done anything to help us out here locally. And I'm gonna say it, and I can ask the questions. Anytime I need something from my state representative center, I gotta contact them and then nothing gets done. They wanna talk about transparency. They wanna talk about how to help local governments and they go to these things on a monthly basis, but nobody ever contacts me. And I've got eight years as an executive and three years as a, a fiscal body. And I think I'd have an opinion to offer about what, why we're hurting and the things that we're in and the situations that we're in. The 40,000 that's given back, the 8,000 this month, uh, Paul, the, 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 the mandates that we have to do at 911, there's just so many things that, that are ahead of this county in particular that are unknown. And when you, we do absorb the personnel and things that to run a court. There's going to be pay raises, there's insurance, there's all of that that's figured in that. And we sit up here and wonder how we're going to maintain, how we come up with just an extra $30,000 to cover a full-time position in the planning commission. It's very, it, it's, it's not that, I think by approving this, we send a message to the, the General Assembly, we need your help to understand the, the things that we have the people moving through our judicial system and the burden it's putting on the, the norm operation. I don't disagree. The benefit to the, the people that's in that in those positions is going to outweigh the cost. However, we have other community. We have our first responders that we may have to take forty, fifty thousand them, and they're out there the, that benefit. But we're going to lose a benefit somewhere because if you look at just another problem that came about that I found out this week was that I was talking to Jamie Bain is, uh, I don't want to mention the name, but the owner of the, the current building that we should have retained the deed is now there's a question of whether that's going to happen. So again, if that doesn't happen and we're looking at as, as a county, where are we going to move the health department? What's going to happen? How long is this going to, is this, and then with the, the 911 issue still that we may have to absorb at the first of the year, we're looking at a million dollars. I, I can't, I, I, you know, I have to send a message to somebody that we are hurting. And I, and I don't mean this that I'm trying to deflate right. the courts because I, I take your guys' opinion, you know, as, what a, as my mom and dad's, but the, we as a council, we have to, we're not going to be here 
all the time. There, this thing's going to rotate out, and I think we have a certain responsibility to, to. Uh, well, I understand the change, but it, it, I can't commit to any. I can't commit to thirty thousand dollars for it because we have a lot of things ahead of us next year. If this was three years down the road and we had a lot of our hurdles over, it would might be a Can little bit. Can I speak difficult. to that? I know currently under the municipal statute, <clears throat> probation user fees can be spent only at the discretion of the judge. So city council has no authority to spend any of my probation user fees that have come in. We have roughly $300,000 in that account now, give or take, I don't have a current figure now. That would follow the court. So it would not, with what revenue we have coming in now, plus that probation user fees, it would be a wash the first year or two. I've spoken with Mr. Spangler. There are options available that are not currently being used, which is the tax intercept program for failures to appear and failures to pay on, on infractions. That speaking with Mike White, who's not, not Mike White, but Mike King, who's now down at the state, says that program has the, the ability to generate a lot of revenue for the courts that participate in it. Explain we don't do that in this case. Huh? Explain what that is. What intercept? A tax intercept is if you have, if you get a speeding ticket, you'll have 60 days in which to respond to it. If you fail to respond to it, but either by contesting it or paying it, your license will go into an FTA or an FTP status. You will now be suspended. And you will be suspended until you address that ticket. Now, if with going to Odyssey and the e-tickets and everything like that, all of those are becoming failures to pay, which means as soon as you pay it, your license will be reinstated. Law enforcement, you're well aware how many people are driving suspended on our roads today because they don't have the money to pay the ticket and they're just going to work and they're going to take their chances. If we participate in the tax intercept program, it's no different than child support. When they file their tax return, the state automatically takes it. So once you participate in that program, that is there, and then the state automatically takes whatever refund they get. It's not a guarantee because a lot of people who are day laborers and are driving suspended aren't filing taxes, but there are also a lot of people out there that do file taxes. There's revenue available there. There's revenue for the infractions to be sent into collections that the city doesn't currently do. So I understand, I've set up there for a lot of years, and I understand and appreciate the position that you guys are in. Um, but I think there is the finances available that would give us the three years to get up and rolling, to do it the right way, to get the revenue coming in, to utilize some of the staff that maybe Odyssey and going paperless is taking the need away from. So we're not having to hire more people, we just reassign people. Obviously you're gonna have the employees for the court itself and maybe an additional probation officer. But again, we're bringing in between 60 and $80,000 a year on that with just the probation officer doing notices. So that, I think the funding will be there. Um, and I think for the next couple of years, the offset with the probation user fees is there to minimize the, the financial impact where you're not having to take from another department because no other department deserves to be taken from. I'm not up here arguing to take from another department, but what I am saying is there's the, the cases and the revenue is available here to support the need and the benefit to the public. And may I say one, may I add also as far as timing, if we, if we go to the legislature, we're only going in front of a study committee they would recommend we would have to have somebody take our bill to the legislature. We would hope it would be passed this this fall, which means it would go into the election for 2020, which means we wouldn't at 20, best 20, we wouldn't open the doors of that court till at best January 1, 2021. I think 22. Or she even thinks 2022. So we're not talking like we're it's going to be in November or January 1 of this year. It's still a process that we would have to go through. Off, yeah, 21 is an off year. So those doors may not even open until January of 23 um, because it'll be on the ballot for 2022. Okay. We're not sure. So We're not sure. We, we've been asked uh, by the judges to make a determination um, on this, on uh, more or less whether we uh, support at this time the sixth court. And if what you're saying is, is true, that you can support this financially, then this resolution won't won't change anything going forward. We've acknowledged the request uh, at this point. What we're saying is we can't fund it. We can't fund it. So if you guys can show that there's a way to pay for it, that's another issue. And I'm not against uh, a six court necessarily, 
but there's a whole lot more discussion that needs to happen and I don't know that the six score is the answer to all the problems. I would say that the legislative, what we, the information we have from many different sources is that if, honest, just put it on the table, if you all say you won't fund it, we will not get it. They want to know that all local stakeholders are together and that they support this. And so that's why we asked at least that you just, I think that, that the, what's on the books now, I think, is that you understand if there is a Sixth Circuit Court that you would have the obligation under statute to fund it. We were okay with that. We think we can take that to the legislature. We think if we take this to the legislature on Thursday morning, which is when we're slated to go testify, that we will not, they will not listen to us. That would be my understanding. Did, that's what we've been told by several different people that are in the know. Did you request this resolution or? or no, I did. Yeah, okay. Right, I, my understanding, I was in here, Judge Dowling was here then. I think you might have been presiding judge then. I'm not sure. Or I could be here. I, Judge Voorhees, you know, I, I have no disrespect whatever for the courts. And uh, in fact, uh, you represented me as a property owner in a small claims case when you were a fledgling lawyer. I don't remember that. In circuit, <laughs> in, in, oh, cir in circuit Court 5. Really? Mr. Hughes probably gave me the case as he my did. senior partner. He did. And uh, in Circuit Court 5, which was a new court at the time, and I was convinced as a county commissioner that city court would never open again. And, and I've heard Judge Dunnick say, well, she can't guarantee that it won't reopen again. Well, who can guarantee anything? But I can guarantee you one thing that we as council have to face and and uh, Mr. Bledsoe said it so well. He's experienced the same experience as I have financially. I've been on this council for 21 or 22 years now. A whole eye-opening experience. We have borrowed money every year since I've been on this council. For the first 10 years, we were borrowing in-house from the reassessment fund because it was very flush with funds. We can only borrow within the year and then we have to pay back at the end of the year. For us to take the word of the city government right now that we can assume, and I thank Mr. Hughes for putting the word assume in there, we don't know that city court will close. We don't see any mandate or any paperwork, but we do know that the city of Muncie has offered the county commissioners the ultimatum to quit paying a million dollars a year for the communication center starting in November and to take over a majority of the ambulance service, which is another million dollars. We've already appropriated in next year's budget and we'll have no anticipated income. Our operating balance next year will be five million plus dollars, which we've worked over 10 years to get to that point. Those two $1 million things alone will cut our operating balance by down to three point something million and we'll be borrowing money from banks who really don't want to loan us money right now from the word I get from the auditor. That's our dilemma. Our dilemma is not, we don't need the court. Your arguments are all valid. We don't have the money. That's all we're saying is, I personally can't sign my name to a document that says we can fund it. I don't think we can. I honestly don't believe we can with the resources we have. And, and I'm sorry for that. You know, I don't want to tell you that. Can I go back to Jane's question just a minute ago? Sure. Kim Dowling, Circuit Court 2. When I was here a couple of months ago, the discussion at that time was a resolution that we were asking for a Sixth Circuit Court and that you would just acknowledge that if the legislature approved it, the county then would have to fund those portions that the county's responsible for. There was not an official vote taken that day, but it was acknowledged and that uh, Mr. Hughes and I would work on that resolution. Mr. Hughes prepared a resolution that said exactly what you all said that day. And he sent it to me unsigned <coughs> and then contacted me a couple of weeks later with a new resolution that Mr. Quackenbush had asked him to put together. And so to my knowledge, that hasn't been discussed as a body previous to today, 
we were not notified that it was going to be on the agenda today. We got a call from Emily this morning that it was on the agenda, so that's why we're here. Um, so where we last left it as a body in an official meeting was that you all had discussed that if the legislature approved it, you acknowledge that it would have to be funded. And that's where it was left that day. Mr. Hughes, did you were aware of this? Yes, he, yes, I said, he I contacted had, I me a few weeks support. later. I could not find support for the second resolution. And, and you're right, it wasn't discussed in a public meeting because, and, and in fact, last month, I couldn't find support to pass this one either. And I'm kind of old school. If I don't feel like the votes are there, why bring it on the table? Because then it just gets tabled and goes to committee or something. And, and uh, so this is the resolution I proposed today. That's why I thought it was a good time to I'm just say saying that get it get it discussed. Yeah. Well, and I think we were surprised by the letter that the, the commissioners wrote that was passed that out. Was, uh, we didn't realize that was, um, and that's kind of what prompted us to come forward. Exactly. With, if, with if this hadn't happened, I would not put it on the agenda. Well, we, and can I propose one second? So we never even made an official um, proposal to the commissioners. We were requesting letters. Um, and so, because we had to take those to the legislature. And so the commissioners did the letter because they have also created the space in the new building for the Sixth Circuit Court. It's just not being built out until the legislature says it's approved. Mr. Hoffman had prepared a letter for us. The Muncie Bar Association prepared a letter for us. And I came and presented to you um, formally at, I believe it was the July meeting and asked for something in writing resolution or letter and what where we left that day was that you all would support mr hughes and i putting the resolution together that said that if the legislature approved it that you acknowledge that it would have to be funded and mr hughes actually prepared that resolution and sent it to me in support of what was said that day in the july meeting it was a surprise to me a couple of weeks later when I got another email from Mr. Hughes with a different resolution that had not been discussed in a public meeting and had not been voted on. Would you, as a body, be willing to hold off the vote? Um, and I appreciate everyone's request for additional information, and I think that's needed and necessary. And all I ask is that before you sign something saying no, that you get the additional information that you're asking. And then when you have all the information, make the decision yay or nay but if you vote no today without all the information you're shooting the you're you're, you're shooting it down um so at least i i support i stand by the numbers of city court um whether i'm the circuit judge or not or i'm the circuit six or not i stand by the numbers of city court and there's no doubt in my mind that if it is if all of the stakeholders work together it won't be a financial impact to this county it will actually be a revenue source. Um, well, the but I have time to that, show you that. If that's the case, the resolution isn't going to have any, any bearing. Yeah, but it will. It doesn't Politically, say, it will. It doesn't say that we don't support a six court. We acknowledge that you're requesting a six court. That's what the resolution says. What we're saying is there is no additional funding that we can provide to it. But from a, yeah. from a political that, standpoint, though, if it's come, if it comes with a negative connotation, which we don't have the money to fund right. it, it will shoot it down. Yes, it will. So all yes. I'm asking is that Done. you Done. stay neutral. However, we're going to have to go back to the financial point because back when 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 Judge called me about the resolutions, we since have had our budget hearings. And we've since at the time I have not seen the decrease in the edit or the lit tax. And that has decreased substantially. And that tells the indicator of the community, the financial impact of this community is on people's wages, yeah. where we're headed. Yeah. That being said, the commissioners that in the past have always helped this financial body here offset certain costs with the edit. They've not been able to do that just as quickly as 2020 and some in 2019. Uh, YOC $550,000. Uh, New World $90,000 on the Sheriff's Park. New World on there's there's another $90,000. With that, those decreases in those revenues that used to help us out as a fiscal body, 
aren't going to be available. And we don't know when that decline is going to go down or stop decreasing. And once you start, and I, I'm not going to say I've seen it coming. I think what all of us did seen it when you see, you know, the jobs leaving and, and the people not paying the wages, you knew at one point the our lit tax, those income taxes that come out to help us supplement, they have decreased over the million. And that's just, we just found that out after the conversations that I've had with somebody. That alone on top of, it's just very difficult to even, if we do nothing, we're saying we're committing to financing it. But in my, in my mind right now, I mean, because we're saying we would, if you get to go sue, we'll just have to absorb it. Well, that's, we just, we will have to, it's mandated, we'll have to do, well, if Emily needs computers, we'll have to get computers, whatever happens, we just about have to do it. But somebody's gonna do it now. And then. Well, and I, and I disagree with that. And that's all I'm asking is for time to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one with the reports that I file with the state every year to show you that it will, somebody's not gonna be doing without a whole lot, if any. Because if, if we implement the other additional programs that are available that the city's not, mm -hmm. I'm not a collection agency. So I'm not sending the collections. I'm not doing the tax intercept. I'm not doing data. That's the clerk. Okay, so, but on those notes alone, Judge, is, yes. I've, I've not heard this on my three years here. If we can implement, we get we recapture those taxes. Well, we need to hire somebody to, to do that job and then more than offset. That. But I mean, you know, we hear uh, that. I mean, and I understand that's what you hear. And that's all I'm asking is, before you take a negative stance, which is we don't have the money to fund it. And that will, from what I've been told politically, will kill the project. Okay, but if we do nothing and the project goes. Right. Three years later, there's a whole new people up here. Whoever's up here. Doesn't matter who's up here. I will make time within the next 30 days before your next meeting to sit down and go over all Amanda has already, Amanda has already done that. She has. And yes. Amanda has, has done that. And Amanda has provided us I have not had a chance to find it everywhere. Well, I was going to say, I haven't talked to There's, 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 there's two that I have not, and that's just because my calendar got crazy. I didn't realize it was coming up today. Had I known it was coming up today, I would have most definitely made myself available, no matter what I had to do, to sit down with the two of you. And that's all I'm asking. I was unaware of it coming up today, that you give me the chance. And if after you see the numbers, you were still opposed, then you guys vote how you guys vote. All I'm asking is for the opportunity to give me 30 days to, to show you the numbers that I stand aside as a citizen of this community. Ron had asked Mary and I if she would, if we would sit down with the judge. Well, I felt like that Amanda had given us the information that I needed, that I did not need to sit down with the judge. I talked to the former prosecutor. I talked to the prosecutor here. Uh, I've talked to Amanda. I have studied these reports. Um, we're doing this jail. Is it, is it, do we need to finish it out now or at least plan on that? Uh, we've heard that they're probably going to do away with city courts anyway. Uh, you know, that's what happened to the Justice of Peace. You know, and that's probably what's going to happen to the city courts. And I think we probably need to be prepared for that, and probably now is the time to do it. Uh, I'm like Amanda. <coughs> look at these. I ask. I I ask Ron to look at the financials, and he didn't want to see them. Am I right? You are, and I respect Ron immensely for his honesty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you know Ron I, has I the opportunity. And, I, I haven't seen anything. And no, and so that's, it is what it is. Air, I, mean, like I, it, I did not realize it was coming up today. Had it, I was in Madison County at a hearing this morning that I cut to come here because I, I believe in the Sixth Circuit. And all I'm asking is that you give me time to show you the numbers because I believe the numbers will support it. Um, well, I'll tell you, if that's the case, whatever is decided, we also, who's going to build it out? Who's going to pay for that? Because I understand, my understanding on the jail was there's no change orders. Uh, so I don't know, I've not been contacted by the commissioners as there's, to how that would so work. So there's, there's no change orders, but the um, plans and the agreement is that the space is there, it's on the drawings. Yeah, I understand. Um, and that once, and the commissioners have agreed, and hence the letter, once the legislature approves the space, then they will build it out. That's not what that letter says. No, our, it, they our support purposes. it, but right. but. 
that's the conversation that we've had with the courts and the commissioners is they will have the space and Emily I don't know if you can add any more to that but um, that they will build it out as soon as the legislature approves it so right well that, to add on what um, what Larry said I mean the, the thing that we do know is is that we're going to be moving all of the courts the sheriff's office the jail out to the new building and there are going to be costs um, we don't know how those costs are, paid, are going to be paid for, and we don't know what they are. Um, you know, I know Community Corrections has been approached about building out, paying to build out their, their section, but where's the money going to come to build out this sixth court? Um, well, uh, it, as far as the jail overcrowding, um, I've worked with the sheriff's office trying to do that right now. We currently walk people over. When the jail goes out there, that's not going to be there. So the defendants that come through city court that never show up to court are going to end up sitting longer because it's city court is a part-time court. There's only one transport day a month that we do. So there's no more having the jail staff walk the defendants over and come into the courtroom. They walk them over and hand them off to the bailiff because they sit down and then they run. You know, once if I can get them to stay in a courtroom, we can resolve their cases. So there's a lot of collateral issues expenses building out things like that but there's also a lot of collateral benefits that will come from a circuit six and the expenses of not having a circuit six six will increase once the justice center moves out there and city court stays municipally located in downtown i asked i asked the prosecutor give me an estimate of how many cases that's moved from city court to over here as he as he has explained to us, you know, they go from city court over here. His estimate was 30%. Hundreds. <clears throat> yeah, huh? was 30%. Yeah. Currently, <coughs> that is transferred from Muncie City Court. To the currently, the only ones that are being transferred from Muncie City Court are the ones that are represented by Don and Jake Dunn. Don, Denovo's. Denovo's a very, Jury I don't think there's that many though, because I think what was it one year when I first took over, there was a lot more transfers because I was having to recuse on uh, clients that I had represented recently. Now that I've been there for a period of time, I have fewer of those. So we get de novos, we get um, jury trials, and then Jake and Jake and that yeah, Don. Well, we all know <laughs> one thing: <Sorry. laughs> that if this happens, county council is obligated to appropriate the money for the next year for whatever is proposed. If, if this court happens, we will be compelled to fund it out of what's available to us in revenue. And, and Larry pointed it out as well as anybody could. We can't speculate. We can't assume. We can't say, okay, city won't have a city court. There's going to be a new administration in Muncie, period. The, the mayor is a lame duck. Uh, we don't know what the future is, but we know pretty well, and I think I've been with several council members over the years, and these folks here understand this budget, and they understand the obligations we have to what is already in place and to create something new is just so difficult to do when you know darn well you can't say you're going to have the money when you don't think you're going to we, we're not going to have the money that's a fact we you, amanda you can come up and tell me that it's going to be a wash but we still have to appropriate whatever that wash is it's a quarter of a million dollars we have to appropriate that on the speculation that the money is coming in. I'm but, asking but we not. can't guarantee that money. Well, I'm asking you not to speculate. I'm asking you to give me 30 days so you don't have to sit there and speculate. I have the 2018 revenue from the court I'm asking this county to absorb. And that's and, what I have right And here. that's what you have that's right what here. I have right here. That, so that is, if I can show you the 2018 numbers, and Ron, I know you're not interested in it, but sit down with me. Oh, me, your numbers are I've great, tried. but show me what it's going to cost for the new court. Well, I have the expenditures. I have. No, I mean, costs. what's the, the what, I, what is going to cost I have for staffing? What it costs to run this equipment, court for 2018. Computers. I have the expenditures. I have the revenue. Benches, desks, all that. None of that's in the in the. And that's not, that budget. would not be an annual expense either. No, we look at the money. 
I understand that. We just took money from from Lynn, like Larry referred to. Yeah. He, he, he was the descending vote on a, a budget that went into Lynn, public safety. We didn't have the money for 2020 in what? public safety lit. We had to move it over into the general fund. What if I get the authority from the state to use the probation user fees to the tune of $300,000 to cover that? I mean, what if, that's what I'm saying, just give me 30 days to sit down with you guys. You, and if you want to vote it down, Ron, vote it down. I'm asking that the, I think the public deserves I'm, I'm only one vote. opportunity I'm, to go. Amanda, I'm only one vote, and I have a lot of respect for you, but when you use the word what if, I can't operate on a council member's well, you were just position to if. say what if. You're, but you're voting no, but no if it's a what if, if, I can't bet on it. I know, but you're voting no based on what if. What if we can't fund it? What if the revenue doesn't come in? What if this? What if it goes back? What you know, if it goes back? I think so history I, is important. But I think on this well, issue, is, the thing about it, I don't, I hate the word vote it down. I, I, I mean, it's, it's, just it's, it's, neutral it's a, I mean, so it, I hate to think that my vote would be voted down. It's well, based on information that I have as a council person, fiscal person. The, the, this is a fact. We could be out, I say a fact. There's a good probability that we're going to owe more money for the 911. There's the health department issue now. There's the lit issue that, that, had we have thrown salaries in that, which I'm not a proponent of, but we've done it. Uh, there's there's the pension fund that we're still underfunding. There's just and now when you look at if this was if we had the jail if we were already over at the jail or the the new facility, those unknowns, all of that would be we'd already worked past that problem. I think it's I hate to say that voted down it. We have a lot of potential problems along with the movement of a facility that we know is going to happen in October, November of next year. We know that that move is going to happen. We know that that decisions have been made and that's moving forward. We can absorb those unknowns without, I think, relatively, I say ease. I, it I wouldn't feel <coughs> like we're burdened because it's a one-time move expense. We'll get we'll get right. through that. Right. And but, maybe but, but understand this, I also know that the edit is, has went down and I also know those bonds that they're relying on to give some breathing room in the edit plan. It doesn't come off to, I think, the fall of 2021. I don't know if Jenny's here to know or recognize. But that's when there's a, there, there will free up a $400,000 a month a year annual bond payment that the commissioners at that time, whoever they are, could, I would think they would rebond, you know, because I think that's a good thing. But it just right now, this is the piece of the puzzle that if it was two years later, even though it takes a couple years to get there, would I would feel more comfortable leaving whoever's going to be in this seat, whether me or whoever the next person, that it's just if it was two years later, we get past some of this other thing rather than everything. And, and, I, and I respect that. And I'm, I'm not arguing the logic behind any of that. This court won't come into place for a couple of years. There's going to be more probation user fees earned that can help build it out. All I'm asking is for you guys to give me 30 days to meet with the individuals I have not had a chance to meet with to show the factual numbers, the legitimate 2018 expenditures, 2018 <coughs> revenue. So when you do make your decision, you're basing it on fact, not what ifs, not uh, that's what I'm wanting to avoid. So I would have done, I would have met with everybody before today had I known it was going to be on today's agenda. So that's what I'm asking is that you at least stay neutral until next meeting when I can get all the information to you. And if after reviewing the reports, you guys decide that it's too risky, then, then that's what you decide. Um, I just am asking that you not decide that until I've had a chance to sit down and go over what actually happens in that court, what the circuit six, circuit six could do, um, and what it what it can make. And, and in, in the defense of Amanda, in all fairness, um, we were not notified that this was on today's agenda. And I, I had, apologize for that, but sorry for interrupting. But this letter didn't come to me until very recently. It would not have been on the agenda I, today I if this letter from the commission. I presented but, in July, and, I and we had a discussion about it. I couldn't get the vote, so I didn't put it on the agenda. It was, it was But the commissioners that day. prompted me to say, we've got to do something. It was discussed that day, but but um, in Amanda's defense as well, we had when we got those numbers from Amanda and put those numbers together, 
we asked for a meeting with Ron and he also wouldn't meet with us. And so then he indicated that he would have a couple members contact us to set a meeting and we never heard from anyone. So um, since Amanda didn't know that it was gonna be on the agenda today, just like we didn't know, she didn't have an opportunity to talk with everyone. And so Mr. Ballard, I apologize. I, If we had known, we would have made I, I, just, I don't know anything. I, I understand. What, you guys, what Jane's stating right here, what Larry's talking about, I don't know if everybody's been talked to you, but I have not. I think we have to No, and I have not talked to you. Well, I haven't heard it either. If, right. if I, I mean, if, yeah. If, if I, I was here at the last meeting and I spoke to Mary and Jane, you were standing there, but I didn't go over the, the figures. Yeah, we went over those I did. Yeah. Um, I spoke to Jessica. I attempted to speak to Ron that day, but he, he said no. So the two that I've not spoken with is Mr. Ballard and Scott, and that is all that is. 100% my error um, because my plan was to talk to you guys and give you the reports that I've given the others to let you know what the numbers are. I didn't, I mean, it's not, I didn't know it was today. So, it, so correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong on this, but if we were to sign this today, it would show the state that we have zero interest in signing this and you yes. go on Thursday to and you'll speak. Go. Right. Yeah. No so problem. we would automatically be potentially hurting that opportunity when I think most of us are in favor of having or looking more into the possibility of a sixth circuit court. Um, so I personally would hate to like put a nail in that coffin right now, but at the same time, like I agree with Larry and I agree with Ron and Scott, like we financially, it's it's a crazy time for us right now. We don't know what's going to happen. And yes, it'll be two years until anything really starts coming in if this were to go through, but it just puts us in a really tricky place right now. Yeah. And I agree that maybe we do table this and so you have an opportunity to talk to Scott and Ryan so they can come in um, yeah. it, it's going to be tricky it's going to be a tough vote if you stay neutral on it and we're allowed to at least go testify before the uh, summer study committee we can get you the numbers that you can look at and then if you decide that you don't want to support it we can ask the legislators to withdraw the bill so it's a long process. It's not like with the summer study committee, they say, yes, it's a done deal. It's not. It still has to be a bill. It still has to go through the regular bill process. Does that happen this Thursday? Only the summer study committee is Thursday. So that's the testimony Thursday. And then from there, it would they would have to vote. If they approve it, if they don't approve it, we're done. Right. If they approve it, then it would be up to the legislators to write the bill, to propose the bill. And we're in a we're in a short session this year, but you know that that legislation doesn't even get written in final drafts sent in until December, I think, first of December. So there's still plenty of time for you all to get the information that you need. But um, but if you vote no today, we're done. Well, what if we just table it till in the future, and you don't have a letter? Either way, it's fine. Either way for yeah. us. They will well, ask my, us my what the that, family council well, is thinking. My concern with that, Kim, is that, that when you go down to meet with them Thursday, that, that they believe that the county council is on board with this. No, I mean, first That's of all, what I, I mean, think you're true. assuming that I would misrepresent something to the state legislature, which is not true. But if they're going to ask me what the position of the county council is, and I will tell them that you have tabled the uh, resolution and that we have more information to provide. And at this point, it's not a yes, it's not a no, but that we have the other letters that we'll provide them and that as soon as we know what your position is, then we'll take whatever position that is. If that's withdrawing the legislation, we'll withdraw the legislation. I think you can understand now why I didn't do or did do what I've done. I, I had no idea where this council was and I'm not one for trying to influence my fellow council members votes. I, I have one vote and I pretty much expressed mine. I have three documents right here that I've received. One's dated September the 20th, one's dated September the 20th, and one's dated September the 30th. They're all from the city of Muncie and they're all about ambulance service and it's all up in the air. We as a council have decisions to make that are based on fact, but we can't get the facts out of the city of Muncie. So for us, for me to trust that there won't be a city court, I've already been that route. You all know I've been that route. I agreed to a, 
a quart five in this room right here. And before I got back to the government in eight years, there was a city court right back over there. They, they went back on their word. And that's hard to do, you know? It, I mean, I, I respect every one of you folks that are here, and, and Larry said it best. We're sitting in a chair here. I, I can't sign my name and say that I can afford $50,000 for something else when I know we may be $2 million short next year in what we've already appropriated based on city's decisions. Well, I, I, and I believe 100% that, that you would not file in city court, but when you're gone and somebody else is in your place, you and I will have no control over over that prosecutor. Well, it's also hard to believe that the city is going to operate a city court with the budget that they have for city court when they only will have <coughs> Uh, ordinance city ordinance violations to five. It's hard to board. believe that they would give up that what we're hearing yeah. as income. Well, they, um, they won't give it they up. Have, they don't have a choice. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's operating right now. Because because there, there, is, there. there is no right. room in the five circuit right. courts to file anything. How did they get it back open again if the prosecutor wasn't filing cases? You know, because it wasn't there. The, the prosecutor started filing. Cases. How could he? There wasn't any court there. It was gone. Tom, Tom Razor was the judge. He left. When we did it, he quit. Well, and, I can, and I'll provide, when I sit down and talk with you guys, and I'll provide to the ones that I've already yeah. spoken with yeah. um, information from the Supreme Court where there is a movement to do away with the town courts. And I think just like Yorktown, Yorktown will never get another town court. They the didn't Supreme like court. the judge out there. That was a problem. Well, the Supreme Court will not. I don't know what happened. I was there, so, watched it. That's, so anyway, that's all I'm asking. It's time just to give the information. I, I don't think that's unreasonable. I, I'd like to just at least table it to the next meeting so I can at least talk to somebody. Yes. I move to table it. Can I say one, one other thing? Sure. Scott's point. Um, to clear up what may be a misconception. If I decide to file all these cases in a circuit six or a circuit whatever, the city has no say so in that. None at all. So. So let's assume for the sake of argument that circuit six gets open in 2021 or whatever it is. Um, I would file, I would file a motion to transfer every single misdemeanor and infraction case that's pending at that time in the city court to the new court. And then every offense that's committed from that day forward in the new court. The, the city, the mayor, the count, they have nothing to do with it. They, they have no control or they have no authority over me whatsoever. Um, and that's where I choose to file, you know, going to a baseball now, giant field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. If the court gets built, I will fill it with cases. I'm telling you, <laughs> okay? It makes, it makes no sense to me to have a Muncie City Court when we have all these circuit courts that can do a, such a much better job. Um, I, like I said, from a prosecutorial standpoint, it's a no-brainer. No I'll leave the, the finances. I don't know the finances. I'm not here to purport to tell you I know what the numbers are. Um, I'm just telling you as the prosecutor, that's where I'd file, and that's where I'd like to file. And I will get the information on the transfers, too, because my numbers in my head may be, <laughs> I don't want to say that those are accurate at all. Well, we're at a point now where we're going to table it or not. I, I have a motion to table, but I do not have a second. I'll second so Ryan and Scott have an opportunity to see it. Judge Dunnick's information. Second by Jessica. We have discussion on the motion on the floor. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Mr. Bledsoe. Yes. Ms. Chambers. Yes. Ms. Lasseter. Yes. Ms. Pike. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Quaker Bush. No. Motion carries. Now we need to move on. That motion was passed. Motion to approve resolution 2019-034 for the record is on the table for time to find further information. That's what a table is for. Isn't it? Thank you. Mr. Hughes has to leave. Okay. Another new business. Can I make a comment? Are we to that point or not? Well, sure. Real quick. Open's always, the floor's always open. 
member of the council. Mr. Ashley, if you could come up to the podium real quick. I just kind of wanted to throw a little bit of a, um, just kind of a shout out. We've had a, a Delaware County advanced EMT that was honored by the state, I believe the state fire marshal, um, as well as some other representatives of the state. Um, can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, it was the Indiana Emergency Response Conference and uh, Lieutenant Robert Svoboda uh, got the uh, EMT of the Year. Very cool, very hard to get. Yeah. Well, it's, it's always good to see our public safety doing well. I think it reiterates the fact that we're not broken as the narrative continues to change. Yeah, I, I think it would be great if you'd bring him to a commissioner's meeting, though. Okay. That would be good. I'm sure the commissioners would like honoring. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, anybody else? Anybody from the audience? I, I would like for my um, fellow councilman here beside me to uh, give the audience a uh, style show. <laughs> <laughs> they want to see. <laughs> what am I? The, the public wants to see. See what? First off, <laughs> check out the feet. socks. The, the feet. Oh. Oh. Feet. Oh. oh. <laughs> My shoes? Your shoes, your socks. <laughs> All right. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I like it, Ryan. <laughs> oh, score some of them. <laughs> Just aliven it up. Just aliven it up. Ryan always has fun socks. Yes, he does. Gosh, you can get a job in a circus. <laughs> <laughs> always, he always has the right words, doesn't he? <laughs> yes. He's got those are called left-handed compliments. There you go. Uh, that's what I call, that's what I call them. Okay, well, um, we're open for president's remarks. I really didn't come prepared to make a lot of remarks today, but I thank the audience for your your patience. Uh, we had some really serious and I think positive conversation about court six. I don't think there's a member of this council that's not empathetic to the fact that we have an overcrowding of jails and we're looking for ways to move people out of the jails and through the courts. But council members have shown their sincere obligation to the public to divide the funds as best we can to use what we have and to speculate on something that we have no idea what it will cost and and some of the costs that were uh, discussed today are actual some of the income is actual but a lot of the costs are unknown the transfer of a court from one building to another is costly but creating a new court is all new equipment all new benches all new chairs everything that a court entails and that's not that's not easy money that's maybe a one-time deal but it could be a half a million dollars i don't know what it is but i know from my experience in the past that it's not cheap and uh, that's why i think tabling this is fine but I did not plan to put it on the agenda today in all due respect. I wasn't trying to throw a curveball at the courts, but I received a curveball. This was dated September the 9th, the commissioners. I didn't get it on September the 9th. I got it later. I heard about it. I had to ask for it. Denise forwarded it to me. And I thought there's no reason for us to set with our uh, resolution on the table in a sense it, it hadn't even been discussed but I had discussed it briefly with more than one council member I discussed it with Mary and Jane asked them to go to see the judges because I didn't want to I knew my attitude was 
very negative, and I didn't think I was the person to go to the judges with a negative attitude. Had Mary and Jane discussed it. Jane got the information from uh, Judge Dunnick, and uh, that's what <coughs> I all came to. I didn't know they were going to conference committee this Thursday either. It's probably a good thing we talked about it today. You know, sometimes council members are the last to know and expected to come up with the funds and the answers without any time to study and realize. But we just came through a budget this last year. We're not done with it yet. We're going to finish it up today. And, and one of the things that I observed more than anything else was that I have a little packet of information in here. Well, I can pull it out right now. But anyway, it's rather lengthy. It's about that thick. And it shows what everybody has spent through August and what your appropriation was. And every year, I pencil that thing all up and we go through and we tell people, oh, you, you got more money here than you needed. We want that, we want that, and this and that. You know, I only refer to that twice through this whole budget hearing. And it's been a key part of our budget hearings. That tells me that everybody's staying within their budgets. They're looking at their budgets and working with the council. And I'm going to say this out loud because our county auditor was on board here for two or three years, and one day he was sitting there and he said, do you realize that last year you spent, appropriated almost $300,000 in funds to pay out people who had left, and the department has and elected officials had hired a new person in that position, so we had to fund new appropriation he said to, to fund them out, to take care of the vacation pay and all that. It was almost 300000 the previous year. The $750 a year a raise that we gave employees for next year is like $297,000. We didn't get that money from anywhere, but it was a trickle up from his suggestion to quit doing that, and we did quit doing that, and we don't appropriate money now. Everybody has cooperated, and that's the way to run a business. And I appreciate it, and I know the council members appreciate it, and I'm already prepared to send you another letter in November to show you another way we can help. And that suggestion came from Mr. Craycraft. He's been a good auditor, and People sometimes say I don't compliment people, and I don't usually in public, but I am in, in his case because that means a lot to me being a numbers person that I know where those numbers come from, and they're not, well, maybe, or we think, or we shall, we hope. I bid on a big job one time, remodeling a lumber yard. And I was several thousand dollars under the bid, the high, the, the high bid, several thousand. And the president of Southwest Forest Industries was sitting in the room, and I said, I assume I left a lot on the table here. Now this man's in a suit and tie and flew in on an airplane. And he looked at me and he says, you know what the word soon makes you and me? Take that word apart and see what it says. And I'm not signing my name to something I'm not sure of in this job. Thank you very much. Now we will recess for 10 minutes. Or we're going to adjourn and then we're going to recess for 10 minutes. And then we're going to reconvene as a uh, annual budget body. So we'll come at, back to, in order at 10, 7, 10. Uh, with that, I'd entertain a motion to recess the monthly meeting. So moved. Adjourn. 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 Adjour
Adjourn for 10. Yes. Ms. Lasseter. Yes. Ms. Byron. Yes. Ms. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Fowler. Yes. Mr. Feigenberg. Yes. Now, we will reconvene at 11.15.